Hi, and welcome to RC Kicks. On today's show, well, we're going to do something that we haven't done for quite a while. We're going to do a speed build. Yep, we're going to take the just released Tamiya Hotshot 2, and I'm going to speed build it on the show. So basically, if you haven't seen one of these before, the idea is from box to fully built, and then I'll set a time and we we'll see how quick I can actually put this together. Now, there is a few things that you should know. One, the board is painted. This is going to make it a little bit quicker. But two, uh, that does include painting up the driver, which does take a lot longer than you may think. So comment below. Let me know how long you think it's going to take me to build this up totally and then we'll find out and then you can see how wrong you are. Also, don't forget, I have to film this. So it's going to take me a little bit longer. So don't think of it from your point of view. Think about what it's going to take me as well as filming it, not editing it, just taking the footage of building it. If I stop to go to do something else, I will pause the clock. So but I do plan to try and do it in one sitting if I can. Right. I think that pretty much covers all the rules. Comment below. Let me know. And uh, let's crack on and get this classic built. Thanks for coming and watching the show. Hold on a minute. I've seen you here before, haven't I? Yes, you. Yeah, I'm sure I've seen you watch a few of these videos. You haven't even subscribed. Come on. Now, the channel is almost at 40,000 subscribers, which in the grand scheme of things isn't massive, but for us, it is a fantastic milestone. Also, we're going to do a brilliant giveaway. Yeah, I'm going to give away something pretty epic soon to celebrate the 40,000 mark. So what are you waiting for? Come on, get on with it. Cost you nothing. We're all laid out, ready to go, and the clock is currently at 8 minutes 11. So the first thing we've got to do is turn our attentions to the gearbox. Now I am going to fit bearings in this. Don't forget someone is going to win this. If you would like to win this, I'll put a link in the description. Go check it out. Right, we kick off on page 4, number 2. So yes, of course, I'm going to put bearings in this. Massive thank you to Plague Bearings for sponsoring RC Kicks. Now we turn our attention to the rear diff. It's a clamshell style, so we have to slot everything into each side, and then we close it up gently because it's really easy for parts to fall out. There is a bar that goes through the middle of it. Make sure you put that in. If you do miss it out, you can slot it in afterwards, so it's not the end of the world. Then we turn our attentions to the front diff. Again, the same sort of design philosophy. So we just put all the parts in and then we close it up. That's it. The front and rear diff are done. So it's taken 41 minutes and 55 seconds to do the front and the rear gearboxes. So now we move on to doing the rear arms. Anybody who thought this was going to be completely done in three hours, I think you're going to be a bit wrong. So next we turn our attentions to the rear arms. Pretty straightforward, standard stuff. Fit the bearings, fit the out drives, and away you go. Now I'm not really a big fan of these screw pins. They tend to damage the arms over time, especially if you're looking at vintage versions of them. You can change them out to actual bars that have the C-clips on each end. That's a good upgrade if you've got a vintage one of these. Now the hub design on these is classic Tamiya, so a little bit of an oddball kind of thing, but they do the job. One thing I definitely noticed on vintage versions of these, as the bottom of the arm rubs on the floor, it makes it really difficult to actually remove those small screws to dismantle it to replace it. So it's something to watch out for when you're trying to restore a vintage version. So time's ticking away, so how well have we done? We've made it to one hour and five minutes and I have the rear done as well as the front. Next, we've got a bolt them to the chassis. Then we've got to, what else we've got to do? Do all the shocks. Then we've got to turn our attention to the body. So I think we're making good time. So let's carry on. 
Now one thing that can burn up quite a bit of time is painting up the driver. Now the driver on these is a kind of strange one as his body is part of the chassis. The head is the same as what you see on most Tamiyas but the body being part of the actual chassis means it can slow you up because the next thing we need to do is bolt the front and rear diff together. So my plan was to try and save some time by doing other things while I'm waiting for this to dry. The driver body is a little bit pancaked but it looks okay once once you put the whole car together you can't really see the actual body that well anyway one thing that was really lucky and helped with my time is that I could actually do the driver head last. So I'm painting it up slowly in the background while I'm doing other things. At the end I will drop the driver head in and then I'm done. Right, we've connected up the rear gearbox to the chassis and then we put the front in. That prop shaft is definitely an upgrade from the original coat hanger version, so it's really nice to see. It's only taken a few screws, but it's definitely starting to look like a buggy at last. Then we have to return our attentions to the front anti-roll bar. So fitting the anti-roll bar is pretty straightforward, it's not a fiddly affair at all. After we've done that we can turn our attentions to building up the electronics. Now I did have a bit of a challenge, I had a servo but it wasn't really appropriate for this car, 25 kilos is just not needed in a Tamiya 4x4, but I was going to try and make it work. Anyway, turns out yeah it's the wrong size it doesn't fit i'll explain a little bit more later on in the video then we got to get the ese in now the classic tamiya tble ese's fit really well because the switch connects correctly to the chassis the hobby wing ones the actual switch is too small and doesn't bolt in properly so that's a bit of a shame so i dug out an old ese so we've made it to 2 hours and 23 minutes and I've got this far. Yep, the chassis is basically all together. I tested all the electronics, they're all working. There was one little snafu that burned quite a bit of time. And it is a warning if you're going to build this and that is the servo you use. Now I put in a 25 kilo servo, I know overkill right, but that's all I had floating around. And it was too proud, it actually made the servo horn rub against the bulkhead. Which means I had to take every everything back off again, find another servo, swap it over and then fit it again. So I did burn up quite a lot of time. So just be careful when you're fitting it, double check that it's all going to line up okay before you go putting all the bolts in, especially the two front ones, they're really long and wasting a lot of time. Now one thing you can do when you build yours is you can paint up the driver while you're building it and when you come to doing the head now when I paint my heads I tend to paint them and then I lacquer them to make the helmet look more realistic but lacquer takes quite a while to go really hard and what you tend to do is you hold the head and then screw it in to stop it spinning around and then you end up leaving fingerprint marks in the helmet which you can see. So I'm now leaving it as long as possible but the good news is because you've got access to the underside to screw in the head it's not like I was worried when I first tied it that the actual bo box underneath will go over it and I can't fit the head and I'd have to take it all apart to fit the head but you don't so you can leave it I still have to paint up the face but it's basically a balaclava with just two little eyes so it shouldn't take too long because there's not a massive amount of detail there next we've got to fit the roll cage once that's all fitted the suspension has to be made and then that kind of bolts to the roll cage uh, there is only three shocks to make so i guess it saves me a little bit of time versus four then we've got to get the wheels and tires on and then put the decals on the body so still quite a lot to go but anybody who's guessing around the four hour mark to five hour mark i think you're going to be close but we'll just have to wait and see right i think that covers everything so let's carry on and get this beauty finished so we turn our attentions to the roll cage. Now this is the thing that was changed in the blockhead version. Personally, between you and me, I like the original as it's much sleeker. Now when you take that metal plate that you see there that goes on the top, make sure you put it the right way round. Yeah, I didn't. I used up four of the pull ties, realized I'd put it on back to front and had to cut it off again. 
Yeah, anyway, glossing over from that, now the roll cage is fitted, we can turn our attentions to fit in the shocks. Now there's only three, one is different to the other two. Now a little tip for you, the shock oil that you get in the kit is fine for the rear, but the front one is way too soft. You definitely want to be putting a, quite a bit thicker oil in the front one, otherwise the front just becomes very bouncy. So we can tick off the suspension, it's all done. I must admit I do like the look of the single shock on the front, but performance is uh, questionable. Right, there's the classic Tamiya bumper with the text stamped in round the wrong way on one side. Yeah, okay, anyway, the bottom plate needs to go on. Now I would fit the driver head before fitting the bottom plate as you will have to remove it as the screw that attaches to the head is actually underneath that plate. But it's only four screws and it only takes a few minutes. Then we put the wheels and tires on and I just fitted the body just to make sure everything fits okay. You do have to cut the hole for the aerial yourself. Then it's all left to do is put the decals on and they're pretty straightforward decals. They're not that difficult at all really. Now the clock is ticking away, so we need to button this one up and call it done. It definitely has a Hornet vibe about it. The black with the lovely kind of orange and yellow stripes is very iconic. But just look at it, isn't it gorgeous? So there you go, after a good few hours, I have a finished Hotshot 2 2024. Now the build itself is pretty straightforward, especially as the body is painted and cut out for you. That pretty much shaves off a good hour and a half. So what time did I do it in? Well, it was three hours, 51 minutes, so just under the four hour mark. Now, if you had to paint up the body, you could probably add another hour, hour and a half onto that. So Tamiya have definitely lowered the bar of entry for this one. So much so, I think, yes, I could recommend this as a first kit build for someone who is looking for a little bit more meat on the bone, if you will, than say a standard grasshopper or a hornet. Looks, well, it's classic Tamiya and I really like it. It's my favorite looking one of the whole family, if I'm honest, and I'm gonna miss this one as obviously this one is going off to a raffle winner really soon. So if you'd like to enter the raffle for this, I'll put a link in the description, go check it out. So now we've finished the Hot Shot 2. What are we going to turn our attention to next? Well, we're going to step it right up and go in a totally different direction. Next, we're going to build up the brand new Team Associated B7 Race Rocket. That's coming real soon on the channel. So, uh, yeah. Thanks very much. Please like and subscribe. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.